actually do really neat things like you can um, start a process and attach it to a C group and say this can only do um, four megabytes of I/O per second, right? And or you can limit its I/O operations, and then it can only read or write at its accounted amount. Um, I saw an example of HD Parm essentially attaching a C group to it. You know, HD Parm has the the minus T flag or something where it shows how fast it can do I/O to a disk. Just basically tests how fast it can do I/O, and they attached a, a four megabyte per second throttle on it, and it sits instead of doing forty megabytes a second or whatever it could, it sits right at four megabytes as well. Um, so, you, and you can imagine how um, App Engine or um, Josh Heroku are interested in things like that, where they can keep you from your you know your process well contained from. <coughs> Have a negative effect on others, um, and also App Engine. I think Google has funded a lot of work, and the kernel and is trying to Im to improve um, the accounting. And they use they use that for literally accounting and for billing on process time. They can also limit memory, um, so your subset your process will be only able to mount you know a certain amount of memory, and then all of its children. Um, CH roots, you can limit the ability to CH root and, or you know, to change a root. And, um, set comp policies are, I don't know, it, it's really probably done a terrible job of explaining what I have explained, but I would do worse on set comp. Um, <laughs> it's really weird, and I and I guess that. Um, Chrome uses set comp in order to correct it to sandbox its um, plugins. So, but and it really hardly limits what the plugin can do. It basically, yeah, it, it's very, um, very stringent, and uh, and I it's almost hard to believe how it's almost hard to see how you could be uh, do do a useful container in that sense. That, that you know something could be useful. Um, so now I'll just go ahead on to the the hello world for Linux for LXC. Try it. It's hard to not use the words Linux containers or LXC interchangeably since now the domain name is the same. And but they're really it's a very convoluted namespace. Kind of. um, let's see. This is my presentation in LaTeX that I learned two months ago at, at <laughs> Mug. So it was a real, then late last night I bothered Will to give me a quick link. Um, let's see. So earlier I had done this and I had also rebooted, but basically if you're interested in playing on, on Ubuntu, this is on Trusty. Um, the majority of the features here are usable on Ubuntu Saucy. And there's actually a daily PPA for um, LXC, for Saucy, or for Precise, and you can get all the features <coughs> except for the namespace features, um, which is new in the the 313 kernel. Um, so essentially you have to install LXC and you have to add C CG Manager for the namespace stuff, which we'll, again, we'll get to that, but that's that's new and so it's not all just wonderful yet. Um, so you have to install that and then let's see, the first thing we'll do is So there is um, LXC, where is that? LXC create with a template of Cirrus and 
name it source dash seros, and then pass on to that template version equal to vel. Um, what that did was down go, you know, hit hit the link there that's shown, and download this tarball. Seros is a little um, tiny little OS that. I, that I develop in order to, it's Linux based, but it's a small root in order to do things like this. They easily have a, a tarball that is downloadable, it's tiny, um, yeah, it's like four megabytes. And then you have a full, generally functional Linux system. It, it gets used on OpenStack um, a lot for testing. It's really just to test something. And it behaves in a lot of ways like a more real Linux. So. Now if I do LXCLS, I see that there's a there's a Linux container called source heroes. It's not it's stopped and it's not set up to auto start. But so what now what I'm gonna do is um, So that is, so there I said clone, clone that snapshot and make a new one called C1. Um, always when I download, when I do a template or when I use a template, I always just make a, a source, a source one, and then I make snapshots off of that. Um, you don't, you don't have to. You could, you could boot source Cirrus just as it was. Source is just a source for copies. It's just the name, code, right? right? Yeah, just the name. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, so now I have, now if I, now I have, you know, there's two of them there. It doesn't show any, it doesn't show the parent-child relationship, but, um, So and then what what that did is now there's there's two directories in Varlib LXC, um, source and C1, and then C1 has uh, and it created a config. Oops. That's the LXC config. Um, and then when I I did that before I I cloned it with snapshot, and snapshot is a bad term for what happened, but rather than doing an rsync or a full copy of the root directory, um, what I actually have now is a is an overlay fs that points back to the hook, to the original one. Um, LXC can do a snapshot via either um, LVM snapshots, is which where it really got the name snapshot, um, butterfs or overlay fs. I think in terms of overlay fs. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar with that, it's a union file system, um, which basically writes every time. So this is my root here, and what happens is any writes that go to it will end up going over here. So I have I end up with a sparse file system at delta zero. <coughs> um, is that a copy on write. Kind of yeah, it's a copy on write at the file system level, whereas LVM and ButterFS would happen at the block level. Yeah, it's it's a really neat. It works really wonderful, wonderful for a lot of things. There's some issues with OverlayFS um, it, in its performing like a normal file system. Um, some things just don't work, and the biggest thing is I notify. Not that if for the vast vast majority of things you won't know, but for things that use I notify, they will not work, and then you'll wonder why things don't work. Um, so let's see. Let's go ahead and see. I think let's see. Go ahead and start that up. Um, so start that up. And what LXC Start did there was actually launch a process. <coughs> was invoke was create this container, attach a network device to it, um, and then. Uh, invoke slash sbin init. You can actually run any program you want inside of there, but the defaults like that the Cirrus template does or the Ubuntu template is to run sbin init. 
Um, and, and literally, SPIN and it, and PID1 is just a process. It's not at all special in there. So it, it's no different if you told it to run slash bin slash bash, your bin bash will be PID1. Um, so there, then you wouldn't have Gaddy running at all. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, and so and that and that's useful. And you can actually let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then LXE attach then put me into the same namespace as that container was at and ran the process I told it to run, oh, which was nothing. So it defaulted to my shell probably. Um, yeah, it must have it must have all to been SH, but then been bash isn't there. <laughs> so there, basically, what we've got here in this container um, is there's a bug in Cirrus there that it, it has local echo onto the display, so that's why it shows up mm -hmm. twice. Um, <laughs> and essentially, there's a full operating system, um, let's see, that looks like it's, it looks like just a normal booted Linux, and for all practical purposes it is. Um, let's see, I have a, I have devices in slash dev, um, <coughs> I do a, I think of a no domain, a no domain. Um, but then if I do from outside, Let's see, maybe this. So I just did a, did a sleep inside. Yeah, so I did a sleep inside. And now outside, there. So and then you can see the process the the process tree there too. So that just <coughs> from outside that's just a PID. Um, so if I do from outside that PID is three thirty thousand eight seventy three. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> win is the password for Cirrus if you're ever interested in hacking it. Um, uh, let's see, oh yeah, sleep. Yeah, we'll do that, that's a little smart. Um, and then again, over here, that's bit 32018. But inside it's bit 123. So just do a PS... Uh, <coughs> yeah. There's not many processes. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I can actually, let's see, I can... So there is a, there, and then I can see that, you know, he's running and he's got that IPv4 address. Um, Now I'm in, yeah. And so LXC had set up, it, it set up the networking. Um, there's a LX, it puts, you know, it, it adds a bridge by default, sets up the LXC VR0 bridge, and then by default it puts MAC addresses off of that. So, so that's for the outside, right? Yeah, that's outside. Um, yeah, inside. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really neat, yeah, yeah, he's, you can have him name him whatever you want it to, um, networking network is kind of funky, anytime when you're interacting with devices, it's, it's weird because they're not, they don't, they're not the same as, <laughs> as real devices, but largely, things just work, um, so, let's,
Let's see. So that was the general hello world and just functional. Oh, okay. So as we saw, when I, I mean, I can I can reboot from inside there. Um, and that's just rebooting your. It reboots container. my container, right? Um, that was a feature a couple of years ago where that was um, added. And so that, yeah, because if you were able to call the reboot syscall inside the container, it would have popped out and got the host. Um, yeah. Not really a bad thing. Is, is there actually another kernel running? No. Yeah. I, good question. Jim. <laughs> yeah. So the the big thing, the difference between KVM or virtualization and uh, containers in general is that we're sharing the same we're sharing the same kernel, right? Um, um, so if you if you think about it, um, let's see if you were interested in running like an an Oracle database, well, Oracle database isn't going to be certified to run on anything other than an Oracle Linux kernel, right? So if you started your your container inside there and and inside Ubuntu, and you had the Ubuntu kernel running and the, the Oracle database inside. It's not going to be certified. Um, for the past couple of years, stuff is that sort of stuff matters less and less than it did. Um, it's it's really amazing how little how little that matters. But clearly, you are running a different kernel um, than the operating system was built for. There, you know, you're not going to have anybody really promise you that stuff's going to work as um, but that said, you know, Cirrus, yeah, so Cirrus has a, I have an Ubuntu kernel, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can run a Fedora container, you can run CentOS containers and anything. Um, try to but you're only running one, one kernel on the whole system. Right, yeah. So what are you rebooting then? Um, it doesn't, yeah, it, it basically kills PID0. The reboot ends up killing, or PID1. And then it just restarts the container. So yeah, it's really a, it's a trick. But memory should yeah memory should be <coughs> set back. And I mean it basically it restarts the container. container. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> so now so I I need to fix that, but um. I shouldn't have to do minus minus kill. The Ubuntu containers, you don't have to do minus kill. But um, So what I did there was to stop it, I did stop and then minus minus kill and all that. And LXC just actually sends a kill to the pit and it's done. <laughs> um, so let's see what else was there. there. Um, yeah, and then if I wanted, so now, So right now I've still got I've still got those two containers, but now they're stopped again. Let's see, that's destroy. <coughs> and now it's and now it's gone. Yeah. So is the original slash dev tree no populated when it gets it or has to be populated by an it? Yeah, it has to be populated by an it. And that's why I, I mentioned a, a little trick that I think they play where they allow the they, they allow the init system to create device nodes that it won't be able to access um, because yeah init systems basically expect that they're going to be able to do that you know make those system calls but then they fail um, yeah so it yeah there will be a, it and you and you dev or uh, gosh kernel nodes don't kernel let's see what is it kernel device events don't don't pop Populate now. What's that called? <coughs> There's an event, an event queue that the kernel has, and those don't get passed in. And if they did, you you could wreak havoc. So, so um, you've got you got a uh, you got your source. That's like master directory. It's, yeah, stuff. it's really just a yeah. Um, like a distribution. <coughs> yeah. Um, and you clone it, which just kind of makes a, a a lightweight copy of it. Yeah. And if you don't do minus minus snapshot, you get a full like R sync copy. Okay. Right. Um, so if you go with the, the snapshot version of it, do you um, if you add something to the master one, does it copy it? Um. No. So over the way overlay FS works, 
is it actually um, here? Let's. Uh, I'll try to show. I'll try to show this better. Um, okay. um, so let's see. So right now. Those are all the files that have been created inside of that container. And so all it does is when it is the overlay takes, you know, if I if I open a file and start to write to it, they they get they get written elsewhere. Um, let's see. So yeah, and then so I can do that's yeah, that's actually demonstrating another point is that the, the file system is shared. So I can say, so this is inside the container here. Control C doesn't work or related. <laughs> um, well, so we know what he's going to be doing next week. <laughs> yeah, this has been. I'd like to have this fixed, um, but yeah. Well, that's just something going on inside your uh, Cirrus. Yeah, it it's not got Dev Console correctly set up. Um, it's interesting because in a lot of ways, so lib, so LXC, the way LXC creates containers is different from the way libvirt <coughs> creates containers. And so the devices you get inside, you kind of have to poke around and kind of support both of them. So I initially had gotten Cirrus to work well inside of containers created by libvirt, and then I tried to get them into LXC, and, and there's more work to be done. But And it's essentially a, a platform in a lot of ways, and unfortunately there's no standard container platform at this point. Um, eight. So now you know inside the container there's that foo there and then so that's uh, the yeah that and that's yeah Main host level. Right, and then outside the container, that file's there. Um, okay, but you, that was, you did that in C1. If you had done that in source, um, would it be available to both? Yes, <coughs> but not so well promised. Okay. Um, <laughs> Overlay FS uses like a, um, it's a, it's got like blackouts, and you know, I mean, if you can imagine how you'd have to implement this. So if I if I do create it, it'll be fine. But if if the container had deleted that file at one point, so if the host had the file, the one file if one file existed in in A, and then B deleted it, then there becomes a like a blacklist that says, hey, don't show that file. And then if you delete it in the host, you and then recreate it, it's not going to again pop up. Um, so overlay FS has some. I mean, that's just, it, it is what it is. It's not something you can really deal with. It makes it really un, ineffective for apt, for any, for like shared things. If you, let's see, you know, apt basically is a shared database, and if you tried to apt get update in the host, and apt get just upgrade in the host, or in the one with the overlay up, over the top, now your package databases are completely different, and it's just, it's kind of, you kind of have to leave a, a single source that you go from. Now, ButterFS snapshots allow the host to are actually literal snapshots, and the you know the host file system could then go off in a different direction with its block le block level snapshot as the and so you could update. Them. They wouldn't have negative consequences, but they wouldn't share the files. Yeah. Um, so let's see, we'll go. So now, I'll, let's see. Um, so that was the. So 
So that was the uh, the Cirrus template. Essentially, what Cirrus or what templates are are just um, a a way to create a container, a, a plugin that creates the container. There's also one called Ubuntu that does a bootstrap and creates Ubuntu. There's one called Fedora that does a bed bootstrap. I think is what it's called. But basically, yum install, you know, and then you can get a, a yum or a, a Red Hat base root. Um, you can do that, and actually the Fedora one works on Ubuntu, but in general, I mean, if you can imagine trying to, you know, bootstrap a different OS in the same kernel file system, or in the same kernel, it lots of times things don't just work. Um, you know, the first thing that fails is if you try to install yum, or install, to do the Fedora bootstrap on Ubuntu is you don't have the RPM command, so it's not gonna work. But then if you have to get installed, you, RPM. They've done a lot of work to make that stuff kind of work. Um, but it's much easier to download, and that's why I started the, the Cirrus template a while ago, and then recently with um, they um, now all the templates that are in the upstream source, linuxcontainers.org now has as downloadable. So that they've built them in a in a more pristine environment, and you can just download the the result of them, which makes things a lot easier. Um, I'll try to show that. So there's a list, and so what I did there was just, um, that's a list of the snapshots that you can do, or the templates? Yeah. Oh, gosh. So those are the, yeah, so this was, was a query of the, of what was available for me to download. That, that's the download template, essentially calls to linuxcontainers.org and says, Hey, show me a show me a list of stuff you have, um, and so I didn't realize that CentOS was there. I was planning on doing that, but um, let's let's give CentOS a try here. Um, so now instead of I can say. I think that's right, and all I did was, and that, that's listed in the output, so. Uh, <coughs> well, there. So now it's going to Linux containers that are going to download the thing and extract the <coughs> file system. Um, and then, so then, assuming that functions, I have no idea how big this is. I, I don't think it was actually there yesterday, but my, maybe. There. All right. So yeah, I want a reasonably fat pipe there. That wouldn't have come through the uh, library that quick. <laughs> um, so yeah, so then it says, yeah, create a CentOS container, release 6, MB64. Clone. What did I name him? <coughs> oh, X. Nice. <laughs> um, X two X one. Uh, and see, since I didn't snapshot, now that's doing a full R sync right there. Or I don't know if it does R sync or copy, but a full copy of the file system tree. So it's you know, as you can see, a lot slower. Um, and the I always whatever. So what's going on right now is... Are you running this on your laptop or is it your SSH into a server? This is a, a server on, ah. it's a server on Brightbox. Okay. Um, yeah, that's why it's reasonably quick. Yes. Um, so speaking of, so one of my questions was, you know, okay, how snappy is this? Is this something you're going to see a lot of overhead with or are you going to... Um, it's, the performance is really good compared to a, a container. I mean, there's no emulation, there's no um, I.O. I.O. is actually, I.O. just as a normal process. I mean, actually, um, 
I yeah. Mean, every app I develop, I do it in its own LXC, and on a daily basis, I have four or five running, and I don't notice them. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, like every, I mean, every Python app, every Node.js app, every everything <coughs> I run in their own container, so that they can have their own dependencies, their own like you know, each of them has their own backend. One needs.